What up, Vamp? Currently, right now, in this moment, I'm trying to thank you. Uh, finish the line work for the jelly, and then we're gonna get going with. Where did I get all this paint on myself from? Then we're gonna get going with the um, something, the alcohol ink. Anybody, anybody else ever forget what they're saying as they're saying it? I feel like it can't be just me. So, um, I was requested specially to go live today at this time for one of our fam that is having a tough week. So, we wanted to make sure we got this live in. I keep like confusing myself with these lines, trying to make them make sense. But you know what? Like jellyfish lines kind of don't make sense. So I'm going to stress on it just a little bit and then I'm going to let it go. That tentacle is fine. So like I keep, I should have, um, drawn each leg in a different color. That way I won't get them like mixed up. Like I'm doing literally while I'm talking. So essentially, I'm just trying to keep the spine of my each tentacle. Um, I'm trying to keep the spine in a certain direction and then add the super flowy looking I don't even know what that part of the body, body, jellyfish. I don't even know what that part of the jellyfish is technically called. I'm sure one of you genius people that is part of the fam will know. But I do not. All right, we're gonna call this tentacle done as well. So now I'm just gonna draw out this guy. This is kind of just my rough view of what a jellyfish looks like. I mean, I am a mermaid, but I've never seen one up close. So essentially all I'm doing is I started with three just straight, long, just not straight, just not uh, scalloped yet, just lines. And then like this one. So I started with this line right here. And then now I'm just going over it and adding kind of like fabric folds. You pet a jellyfish at an aquarium that was guaranteed not to hurt you? Damn. I'm assuming from that that it was a lie and it did hurt you. Tim, 
we're here for you, and I hope we bring you some distraction or... entertainment in some way. When people have bad days, I'm always down to help. Okay. So I'm going to probably get a little too extra right there, of course. It doesn't even look like how it's supposed to look. Also, the type of eraser I'm using is called a kneaded eraser, which is really awesome because it picks up the graphite. At least that's what I'm using. But then you just stretch it and it kind of, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it disintegrates what you've erased or just consumes it and soaks it up, but like, we'll use a bunch of this. We'll just keep using, using, using it. This is the other half of this one. It comes lighter and then, so this has gold, glitter, a whole bunch of graphite on it. But you just kind of pull it and work it and it thinks, my love. It kind of just, cleans itself it's it's crazy it's like putty but it's not really that sticky I mean it is tacky but now it's like almost the same color as the one I'm using so anyways moving on I think we have the needed erasers in our Amazon shop link listed below this video in the description box. Okay. So I'm just adding the little waves and then drawing, connecting lines, connecting lines. I don't know if that's the right word. Just I'm adding in the folds that it's implying to give it the shape that I'm wanting. And if it doesn't look how I want it to, then I just kind of overdraw it a little bit more. And if that doesn't work, then I only erase it just like that. If you haven't seen my alcohol ink artwork before, then you may not know that it's very like sketch. I have a lot of lines. And so I like to see where I've, like all the different places that I tried to make a line work. And so, all of the transfer graphite from this being a soft board. So it's, I could put hand stamps everywhere. I'll clean some of it up, but for the most part, I like having that. I like, I like sketched fine art. I don't even know if that makes sense, but I said it. Or that artwork that looks partially complete. I don't know. So the spine. That line is here. No. So if you guys weren't here with me, I'd still be doing the same process. Just my problem is sometimes I don't know which 
side to draw a line on. Sometimes folds like that happen like more centered. I'm going to go like that. B, what do you think? You do more of like actual supposed to look like something for real type artwork. How do you handle? I wouldn't. I, w I, w I wouldn't. Like, I wouldn't try to do exactly. You know, like, I'm, you're not trying to do exactly, but just get an idea of. It's like doing hair or eye eyebrows. Like, you just get an idea of what that shape is. You just kind of just idealize it. Do your own version. Because you're going to paint on this. Like, everything's going to be. I am. I am going to be painting on this. But um, I'm going to make it really loose painting. I'm going to make it. I'm going to do basically an alcohol ink over this but not like paint within the line so it's going to be real loose if you've ever seen a watercolor tattoo that's kind of the look that we're going to end up with on this one also these lines will make more sense when i um nope when I get all of the lines drawn in black in a moment. Are you using photo reference or gesture memory? So I did look at the image I used as the cover photo. Um, I looked at that before I started. I don't have a reference just out. Uh, if I wasn't doing a live, then I would probably have a reference pulled up on my phone. It's always good to have a reference of what you're doing. Always good to have a reference in front of you. But since I'm kind of just idealizing it anyways, it's not that big of a deal. But most of the time paintings look better if you are working off of a reference. Usually, most of the time. I can't really think of a time where having a reference would be not helpful. Every time I do an alcohol ink piece, I'm reminded that I need to do one for Shane Stoner. Keep, keep slipping my mind because we have too many things going on at one time. What is it? Too many pokes in the fire? That's probably not accurate. Pokers?
It was getting too congested in here, so I had to reroute this this one. Nope. Too many irons in the fire. It's quite possible that a lot of these little um, tentacles aren't going to make sense by the end of it. This is going to be a whole bunch of uh, shapes, but I'm okay with that. I'm almost done with the boring part, though. I don't know how to turn this thing around without it losing what I'm doing. Yeah, like, flip the flow to go this way. You know what I mean? Just draw them in. Okay, so just fold it in. So, you're doing it, you, you want what? You want them to... So, it's following this line. And so I need it to do this, but on this side. I'm going to put some ice in my this. BRB. I'm thankful every day that, y'all don't judge me for putting ice in wine. I'm thankful every day that he, I have a husband that um, is artistic and not only can help me with my artwork, but likes to help me with my artwork. <gasps> Shane, I didn't even know you were in here. Shane Stoner, I haven't seen him in a while. He's been busy. I like it. I just don't know how to make it. I don't know which of these is the folds. That you, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't try to do this on this side, but I don't know how to turn it. Like, you did it right. Like, you put the waves on this side, but I don't understand what in here is. Just go. Yeah. No, now it's spaghetti. What is what? Kim, thank you so much. Where's the button? How do we always lose it? Thank you so very much, Kim. That really means a lot to us. We... Uh, put a lot of time and energy into the channel, and there's the party horn. And um, contributions like yours help our channel to keep rolling. Okay, now what did he have going on here? I don't know what that is. Mm. 
You know, it's a jellyfish. It's just gonna be shapes, right? That part is confusing me. I would just save it to the end and get just fully confused by myself. I like that part and that part. Okay, I'm almost done being meticulous, you guys. Swear, I promise, swear. Maybe I'll just do one of these guys to distract from the this. Perfect. Crushed it, nailed it, winning at everything. Okay. Feel better about all this now. Um, sorry I'm not chatting much with you guys. As you can see, this is taking all of my concentration to kind of, um, well, it takes a lot of concentration, I think, anyways, just to do an art piece sometimes. And then if you then also consider trying to um, talk your way through it. Okay, now I have a this. The head part doesn't make sense, really. I'm trying to make it not look like a mushroom, but uh, I don't know if it will ever look like a mushroom. I mean, not look like a mushroom. Maybe I should add some of these up here, but also I don't wanna because it kinda, it doesn't look like that. It looks, oh, the swatch from yesterday, this, this is a jellyfish. I guess I could use that as a reference. But even then, I'm not 100% sold on the shape of the top. But it does show me that there's like, boop. There's like ripples. Is that what this is, Bulldog Hustle? Okay. 
Oh, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Y'all are probably on four different conversations. All right, let's erase everything in here so I can see what I'm working with. What I said before is a great tip for if you're doing something confusing like this. So if you're going to do an octopus, a this, then... Um, This doesn't connect anything. But it's supposed to go with this thing. So, <laughs> in order to avoid what I'm struggling with in this moment, if you did each tentacle in a different like color pencil, then um, you can avoid getting confused. Like I am right now. But if we're honest, if I had each tentacle as a different color, I'd probably still get confused. That looks good. Awesome. Okay. It looks like it should make sense. So, spoken like a marine biologist. Well, I don't want to brag, but I did stay in a Holiday Inn once. So, my goodness, I didn't even know you guys could see my busted, my busted iPad screen. Okay. No, it's not in the way. You could just see the corner of it. Okay, I can't see you guys for a second because I'm going to pull up a reference for, um, uh, I need one of the jellyfish references because I need to get something happening with this mushroom top. So while he's doing that, I'm going to just clean up some... What, what image? I just, I don't... I'd have to see. I don't. These are such majestic animals. I think they're just aliens. Ew. Is that what's in there? I don't want to know that. You think they're aliens? I could see that. I could totally buy that they were aliens. Okay, on top of cleaning up some of these lines, I'm also dabbing my harsh graphite lines. What's up, Tudor? I hope you have a rad day today, Tudor. So, in addition to cleaning up my lines, I am also dabbing my existing graphite lines so that they are less likely to smudge. So for example, if, mm, I can't see what you guys see. So for example, right here, I haven't dabbed this part. If I went like this, it smudges out. But this bit that I already dabbed, if I go like this, it does not. So I'm just, it's essentially like fallout for you ladies that do eyeshadow. It's essentially I'm picking up the fallout or the loose graphite that's on top of my lines. Because whenever you draw a line with a pencil or charcoal or pastel or charcoal or anything like that, there's going to be some like powder, like dust on top of the line you draw. 
just because it just will be because of the friction of when you draw on the paper. That's e-science. I don't know if that's why, but it makes sense to me. So if you just dab off the fallout, then you don't really have to worry about smudging your lines as bad. For me, I don't care if the lines smudge, except for I don't want any of the graphite to dull my alcohol inks. Smudgy lines just enhance my uh, style, I guess. I have like a very messy, refined, um, artistic style when I'm just creating for, cause I want to, instead of a commission. Well, I guess I, that rolls over into my commissions as well, but, um, my style is just very hot mess success. Doesn't look like much, doesn't look like much. And then you blink and it's like, oh, okay, well, I guess that's sellable. Pardon me while I clean my eraser. If you guys came here to see like a super quick, easy, well, I guess this isn't the hardest way to do a piece like this, but this is definitely not gonna be a time lapse, but also definitely this part takes the longest and I'm essentially done with it. I'm just picking up the fallout. I already have my alcohol inks pulled and ready to go. Also, we took Canvas to a training place today just to get some socialization and, you know, we've been working with her, but we wanted professional work and also get her used to being around other people and dogs, etc. Y'all, they opened with e-collar. I don't know. I'm not a professional dog trainer. Surprised. I know. I know. Stay seated. But like, aren't shock collars like a last resort? In my head, that's like the last thing you do. But this lady who had to be half my age, which is fine. Young people can know how to train dogs too. But I, like, we went in for an evaluation and she was like, I think this collar will fit her best. I was like, whoa, calm down, ma'am. And she was like, yeah, so what you do is you put this e-collar on your dog and you just... It's not very strong. You just give it a little tap to get their attention, even when you're like just rewarding them. So you just tap the thing on the lowest setting and then you give her a treat. That way she associates it with good things. I was like, why do I need to teach her that a shock or a tap, however you want to say it, you can spell it however you want it. It's still putting electricity in a puppy. What is that tap? Why does she have to get used to being mildly electrocuted? Why don't we just use treats like normal people? Oh yeah, I remember. I know, I, I sat there and she was, um, yeah, so we took her to another, um, she has an evaluation at a different place in the morning. That's just for hanging out, though. Oh, yeah. It is just for hanging out. But she's going to be doing other... Miss, ma'am. She's going to be doing... No. 
other, um, sorry. I got distracted while I was drawing these lines, which I'll fiddle with more later. Anyways, now she has an appointment at a different place that does not do shot collars. I called them in advance and was like, hey, this may sound like a weird question, but do you bring me those gloves over here? Oh, this may be a weird question, but do you guys use e-collar? She was like, is your dog like extra? I was like, she's four months. How are you gonna put electricity in a four month pet? Anyways. So what's up, Sue? So I understand that like, You can't even feel the vibration on the lowest setting on the collars. But it does depend on circumstances, but I can't fathom a circumstance where I put an e-collar on a four-month-old puppy that doesn't have behavior issues yet. I feel like that would just put behavior issues into her. But I digress. That's just what I was thinking. I'm not opposed to it if they need it but that's just so last resort for me. All right, let's pull the colors out. I mean, there's a place for everything. I just, I don't think it's with her. She's already very sensitive. Like if you yell at her, her feelings get hurt. Okay. And he was four years old. Exactly, Rachel. Malinois are like super hard to train. Kid with tonsils playing up again. Yeah, um, Jeff just took the pup out to play in the, uh, the atrium. So we don't have to worry about loud puppies. It's okay, Bubba. Just grabbing my embossing gun. I thought I was prepared and then the world corrected me. So, your dogs are barking because they heard mine. My bad. My bad, my bad. All right, hopefully this won't knock everything over and probably will. All right, so if you guys have never seen me do my alcohol ink uh, artwork, essentially what's gonna happen is I'm gonna drench the piece in alcohol and then let me show you kind of the style I'm, I'm going for. Hold on, two seconds. Um, So it's going to be similar to B, stop scaring that baby. Or just keep on. So it's just going to be like colors inside, outside of the lines. I thought you were doing stuff to keep them from barking, not cause them to be barking. <laughs> what happened? Who is that? Here, just now. It's okay. Oh my goodness, I love that one. I'm gonna save Where's that picture. Ball? Let's get the ball. So, see how the color is like, some of it is inside, some of it is outside. It's very messy, very all over the place. So that's what we're going for in this piece. Okay. That's kind of my style. That's kind of what we're going with today. Really like that reference I just pulled. Okay. What's up, Marcy? 
just going to kind of blow with it. You want me to leave it up here? You want to get in close somewhere? Well, if you want to be here and like zoom in on things, that'd be rad. Why did it do that? I don't. Why does it look like it's like. Doo -doo 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 -doo? Oh, I don't know. Um. Am I going to do pinks and purples? So, I brought out my tertiary colors. Vamp, full disclosure, I wanted to do this color for a minute. But I know, I know that I would get a whole host of cruddy browns if I did that. So, there's so many awesome references. That one's just not going to be in focus. Okay. So, I brought out... Yeah, yellow, I know. Every time she plays with that, I'm like, what? And now that's what do you why I have? don't think of anything, but she had a whole a Doritos bag earlier. She likes it Doritos. Like Doritos um, bye, Julie. Thanks for coming in. Okay, so we're going to drench the whole piece in 91% isopropyl alcohol. You can use less percent, um, but it's not gonna work as well. And by not as well, I mean horrible. And then also you can go higher and it'll be okay. So just, if you can help it at all, don't go under 91%. And then there are some uh, like grain alcohols that you can use, uh, like Everclear, and there's some kind of rum that would be fine. Uh, Everclear worked best. You can also use acetone. Doesn't work as good, and it's hella smelly. So I'm gonna start with uh, purples and pinks and aquas, but we may. Um, We may end up doing the, I may throw some yellow in there too as well. Who knows? Who's to say? Also, I grabbed some Ranger Smolder. I, it looks kind of like a pewter. Has anyone ever used it? Do you like it? What do you think? What are your thoughts? I'm just opening all of my <coughs> colors first. Jeff's just trying to make her be loud while I'm live, I think. He's pulling out every scary and loud toy. Like, he doesn't think she's going to be scared. Okay, so the colors I'm using are Spectrum Noir. B. That is very distracting. So the colors I'm using are Spectrum Noir LY1 Yellow, if I use yellow. Um, Ranger Mermaid, cause reasons. Oh my goodness, Gail, thank you so much. We have another one, but without that. I so appreciate it, you guys. Every contribution helps so much and it, it just makes my heart happy. It makes it less stressful to live as an artist, you know? Uh, Jacquard Passion Purple. I don't know where the top of this is. I'm glad I, oh, it's in there. Ah, I'll see if Jeff can get it out. If I use this one, it's a Blick Studio Marker Refill in this shade 034 Violet. B, can you see if you can get this tip out? Also, uh, you're gonna stain your fingers if you don't put a glove on. I'm also going to use Jacquard Pinata Senorita Magenta. 
or magnetum. And Copic marker refill in the shade Fuchsia RV one uh, RV09. Whew. Thank you. Just that part or there's a whole part? No, that's it. Will you put put it in here? I don't wanna get purple on my finger. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just the tip. Um yeah. All right, so we got our other purple going again. Okay, the key to have an awesome looking alcohol ink piece is to use more alcohol and less of the color. That way it stays bright because while it'll always be translucent, usually. Claire, I have to use blending solution with the smolder. Um, now I've lost track. Okay, so uh, alcohol inks will always be usually uh, see-through. But if you get them really concentrated, really deep, dark concentration of those colors, then you will, um, you won't like it. It's going to get too... Too much saturation. I'm out of my duck blue or green or whatever that was. So I also just pulled Pinata uh, Jacquard Sunbright Yellow and Copic Marker Refill. <gasps> duck blue, I'm not out. Y'all, happy day. Okay, so more alcohol, less pigment and put a lot of alcohol down to keep things moving and fluid. Ready, go. Also, it's Wednesday, which means we're paying it forward. No, retro, no. What's it called? The train, we're doing a train. Train of viewers. After this feed, we're gonna all go over and check out Tish's channel. Who is in the room right now? Okay. But if she wants to let us know what we're going to be arting on her channel, that would be awesome. Okay. So right now I'm just trying to get a splash of alcohol most everywhere. I don't want to have all, ooh. I just smudged that. I didn't pick up enough fallout. It's okay. Um, I'm trying to give some splashes. All right. Also, a little bit not level, which is okay with resin because I don't have it here like on this table for long, then it goes into the dust-free zone. But this piece will probably be here for a bit. So I'm just shimming it up on this side. Um, I also got my um, mixative. Mm, I don't know what color this is. It's some kind of gold. What's up, Evelyn? I didn't come up with the word train. So talk to the people in charge. All right, I don't want these dots of vibrant color. So I'm just blending those out before I even add the rest of my inks. Okay. Now I'm going to start with super light individual drops and not a lot of them. Because the more that you put down, the more you have to ultimately kind of blend out. Oops, I didn't mean to have two drops there, but it'll be fine. Okay. 
Now I'm going to put a little bit more alcohol down just to kind of splatter the inks that I just laid out. I put a lot of alcohol down as the base because I don't want the inks to stain my board. I know it doesn't look like I have a lot of color down right now, but it will change. Trust me. I do think I need to add a little bit more of the aqua up here, though. All the colors I'm using mix really well together. So if I do get a secondary color off of um, the colors mixing just together. In my opinion, you can't have too much alcohol put down, but you can have too much of just the color put down. I'm just going to give it a good swirl to mix everything up. And now, channel crossover. Bounce the tube. I like all of, most, all of those. So I'm going to use an embossing gun with a really short cord to manipulate my inks. You can use a heat gun, but it's going to um, it's not going to look the same with a heat gun because it's going to add more heat than what this is adding. And the heat is what makes the alcohol evaporate. Ugh. Okay, it's fine. Usually I don't want the harsh lines that using any kind of heat to evaporate your alcohol inks. But because of the, the look of um, jellyfish, I don't mind. Hey, will you come hit the button for me? Never mind. Thank you so much, Deborah. <laughs> That, it really helps a lot, and I, I so appreciate it. Also, please don't feel obligated to contribute. It is in no way required. I just, it warms my heart when you guys even think to come here and watch, much less contribute to, you know, what we're doing. So because of the way jellyfish look, they have those, incredibly beautiful folds of everything um because of that i'm going to be very okay with getting these kind of dark lines and having some infinity rings i'm going to try to separate these lower inks from the upper inks this is looking a little bit too phallic up here on the forehead of our jelly. Let's bring it down, bring it down, people. So I'm going to try to separate the upper part of our jelly from the bottom part of our jelly. Because I want to get these very awesome folds. I'm not going to follow my lines exactly, mainly because I don't think I have the ability <laughs> to do that. Maybe Clara would have that magic. I do not. So I'm going to be just adding some kind of frills with the embossing gun 
some hard lines, but not that many. In theory, not that many. As you guys know, if you've worked with alcohol inks at all ever before, sometimes you just can't control any of it like you would want to. So in order to get some of these lines, I'm just using indirect heat, uh, which kind of basically means I'm putting the uh, concentration part of my embossing gun on the outside of where my everything is, and I'm letting the heat bounce off my substrate and go into the different areas. So I'm kind of running my, uh, I almost called it a heat gun, my embossing gun. I'm running it very intensely in the areas that um, are kind of set. They are blank because they're in between the tentacles. So I'm purposefully quick drying those breaks. And while I'm going, I'm adding more color and more alcohol in just very specific areas, very designed areas. I'm only ever, this is just my process, I only ever add more alcohol when the alcohol I have down already is still fluid. I don't have a lot of success at all uh, when it comes to adding more uh, alcohol and pigment and all of that once it's dry, I end up messing everything up. So I basically fully avoid that by only adding more alcohol to the piece in areas that's still fluid. Claire probably has a way around that. She probably has some super secrets. If you guys are super into uh, alcohol. Oh my God, Tim, thank you so much. We're, we're here for you. you, you shouldn't feel obligated to do that. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, Tim, thank you. Y'all are gonna make me ugly cry. I can feel it already. Okay. So now I need to work on these outlying areas because I have my separation. These areas are coagulating a bit because I'm just pushing the alcohol ink kind of uh, harshly into the areas where they're coagulating. And so they're giving me that frilly look that you see in jellyfish. At least, I guess, the kind of jellyfish that I hold reference for. That's kind of why I wanted to do this in alcohol ink. Number one, uh, I feel like I can make it look more accurate. Y'all, words are hard today. I feel like I can make it look more accurate uh, with alcohol ink. The medium kind of just lends itself to the look. And secondly, I just don't have skill in any other medium to make something look like something else except for, <laughs> except for alcohol ink. No shame. No shame, though. No shame.
Be my, this doesn't look that bad, just so you know. I'm not sure what you said. Yeah, I'll find out what you said when I'm done with the embossing. Oh, I just wanted to hear you say it four times. I feel like a lot of the aqua is kind of gone. Oh my goodness. I'm scared. So this middle part is still fluid. Eh. So I'm going to add a little bit of that duck blue there and hope I don't regret it. I guess I'll just put more of that aqua color up in the top part of our jelly. Also, this part doesn't have much happening. What should we name our jellyfish? This part was already dry, and I hate adding when it's already dry. It never turns out right. All right, I'm gonna let that just self evaporate. I'm gonna let that self evaporate. And what happens when you're not manipulating it when it's evaporating is it's gonna be really soft. So for example, up here, I was doing a lot when I was working on the outside edge and then I started working down here. So this area dried on its own. So it's really soft. There's not all those lines cause I'm not making it go in these lines and evaporate. Gonna help some of that coagulation to disperse here. Even though I only added a few like drips and drops of color, I still feel like it's bordering on being too dark. You know what I mean? Where's my, this will work. Nope, that won't work. Where's my this? Uh -uh. I'm just gonna dab off some of the dark bits, some of the coagulation, only because it's gonna take quite a bit for it to dry. All right, now I'm gonna work on this bit. I'm gonna shim it up one more time. What's up, Mr. Coop? Haven't seen you in a bit. Tink, don't judge the ice that's in my wine. It was warm. Okay. So even though I hate putting any manipulation on something that is already done drying when it comes to alcohol ink, I have no choice but to do that up here because it kind of just looks like the head is evaporated. So I'm going to have to do it. But I'm going to be real careful about it. And I'm gonna keep my embossing gun on so that I can keep it pushed from all of the everything else that it will probably try to mess up. So I didn't put any yellow on the piece. Do you guys think it needed it? Are we good with the purple, pink, aqua? palette we got going on.
I'm just gonna push it to the edge of what I drew and then bring it back. It's not gonna be a straight line, but that's okay. And for this part, I don't want a lot of lines. I want it to be softer. So essentially, I'm just gonna control where it's going from the outside. I actually don't want this line. I want it to be soft all the way across. So I'm just worried about controlling the outside. If I were to just do this forever, I would get infinity rings. So it's gonna be a circle and a circle and a circle and a circle and a circle until everything's evaporated. Uh, but I don't want that. I want it to be just soft. So I'm going to be hitting it with heat really high up and as evenly as I can. Looks like I'm still gonna have a hole in the middle. I'm also going to be dabbing up some of the coagulation, but not all of it because I feel like there is that, like, it'd be a good separation from the top of it to the rest of it, you know? Also, if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. I'm Erica. I'm with, uh, obviously, Artist Still Death. We go live every weekday at 6 p.m. Central, except for on Tuesdays, it's at 2 p.m. Central. We're full-time artists. We have a small business resin shop. It's artistilldeath.com. But we make most of our revenue off of YouTube. YouTube in the shop, that's how we keep the lights on. Hi, Julie. Valerie, it has been way too long. I'm gonna add a little bit of motion in here because it's mostly dry, but it's not gonna push like a wave of alcohol. Once it's no longer really fluid, it's just damp alcoholing. That's when you can kind of really go in there and make sure everything's super dry. All right. Thank you, Embossing Gun, for your service. Now we got to figure out if we want to clean anything up. I'm going to take you guys down for some up close and personalness. So you can still see our pencil lines. I'm gonna go in with black and darken those. I do think I'm gonna soften some edges. Let me get you kind of, sorry for the movement. I hope no one just got car sick. Nope, motion sick. I know this one kind of like blurbed, but I was going to fade out some of the edges, but I think I may leave it because where's my, my this, nope, my this. So So my references, my references. Let me just show you. It has that like oh. 
Come around to see you guys. It has that, like that haze. Ugh. So it, uh, I feel like that is kind of like what that looks like. So that's why I'm cool with the coagulation that we've got right now. Right. You are loved, Tim. All right, I'm not going to do any cleaning up currently in this moment. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the black lines on. And then after that, I will refine some of the lines if I need to. That's a black Posca. Well, Pintar. Who does Pintar? Why do we have Pintar pens? So now I'm going to use paint pens. If you've never used a paint pen, you can use a billion, zillion different kinds. Um, if you use Sharpie, then that's rad. Just understand that when you start to, if, if you use Sharpie, use that last, like very last, because Sharpie is alcohol based actually. And so, for example, I usually do some finagling after I put my black lines on. And if I have black lines that are done in Sharpay, they're going to move because they're alcohol based. Tim, it is my sincerest pleasure to be a distraction for you. All right, so there's nothing that's tacky, nothing that's still fluid. But before we do that, I need to seal it. And to do that, I'm using something, this. My UV archival spray. Okay, so this is my UV archival spray. Very important you get matte because anything that's beyond matte has some form of alcohol property in it and it will wake up and move your inks. This isn't going to um, activate it. No, it's like if I were to let this dry and then put alcohol on it and like rub my finger into it, it would wake it up. It's not gonna like fully protect it. To do that, we're gonna add resin, like maybe tomorrow. Not today. Um, so it's just going to protect it between now and resin. And any layer of protection is good for alcohol inks. And so we use all of the layers of protection. I'm just using my embossing gun to dry that um, archival spray. You could probably use a matte spray paint. Totally up to you. Oh, they have real Posca pens? That's rad. This is a real Posca pen. You can tell because it's uh, written in English. And I think Posca actually may be out of an Asian country. But the ones that have not U.S. American English writing, it took me three tries to come up with English. Um, the ones that don't have English are counterfeit. They still work well, 
but I find that if you like go over the line twice, sometimes it will um, pull up the color instead of put more color down. What's up, Megan? How you been? Okay, so I'm just gonna go over the lines with my thin Posca pen. This is a bullet shaped 0.9 to 1.3 millimeter thick Posca pen. I'm not really caring much if I hit exactly on the line that I pre-drew or not because I'm going to add some sketchy lines, some, I'm going to add a lot of stuff. So right now, since I kind of let this get a little bit too dark, I'm trying to discern what is... Um, supposed to be here and what is not. Also, I can't see what you guys are saying in this moment, so the mods will take amazing care of you while I am away. You don't need to be up there with him, Miss Ma'am. She does not concur. She has separation anxiety from Bowie. Fun fact. That was nerve wracking. Um, yeah, we, we, uh, he is a small, large puppy. That don't make no sense. Well, she is like, so big right now. <laughs> Look at this girl. Hey. Oh. <laughs> she is. She is huge now. You're just she a big grew girl. Up so fast. She's like twice as big as Bowie now. That she is. Yeah, she does look like a little fox. That is exactly what she looks like. I'm sure some of this I've gotten fully wrong. We'll be fine. Looking good. Looking good. See what's fun about jellyfish and stuff like this is you have a dark line, but then it, it's you give it the structure, but then there's always like a little bit of there and there mm -hmm. for a jellyfish. I always love the pear. I can see all her beautiful wings dancing down. Holographic foil will look great on this. Yeah, I'm either going to do a foil or a, a vinyl.
Well, yeah, one or the other. Maybe even both. Who's to say? Who's to say? I'm just connecting all the little lines. of everything that I drew. Down here. Okay. All right. Now, this guy. Super important to keep like very fluid. Ugh. As I say that, my ink runs out. Super fluid line. When you have to do second and third passes, things get sketchy. You also want to keep it um, Like the line going smoothly. Oh my goodness, it's getting confusing for me even now. I wonder if I chose a board that was just a little bit too small for this type of piece. Hopefully not. Okay, let's make these lines make sense. Hope they make sense. Well, actually, they don't really have to make sense because, I mean, it's a jellyfish tentacle. How much sense do those make? They're just magic underwater creatures. So one of the first things that ever, well, the first thing I ever painted with Jeff was an elephant. And um, it was a lot of fun. It was very intimidating because I knew he was a really good artist. And he helped me to know how to draw, uh, paint an octopus. Also, I still don't know how to do it. Low key. Like he showed me, but I wasn't really listening. I just wanted to watch him do it because he's so talented.
None of that makes sense, but we're going to say that it does. Right. Oh, there's skinny ones too. You think the size is good? Cool. I need a finer point paint pen. Do you have any tea tiny paint pens? I think I found one. Black. Nope. I don't even have to be Posca. I just need. If it works. Because we have all the paint pens. All right. When did you guys fall back down? Well, it's if they can see it up close. You can see them like you have it up, up high. And you I know, but since I don't have a videographer, I have, like, if I go up here, it's not in screen, and I don't know that I'm up there. Like, a second ago, it was like this. So. Swish and flick. I still don't know what I'm going to do with the top of it. Okay, I'm going to pull up my references. So if you guys are talking to me, uh, I'm not going to see it for a minute. Thanks for all the paint pens. So I always do, I think before I do the little lines, I need to do my thicker lines. I think I should do some, like, where would it look right to do thicker lines at? Hmm? I, I need I need variations in my line weight which means I need some lines to be thicker and some lines to be thinner and so man how many of those like Super fine tentacles. Do they have? Like silver or gold or white. Okay. So the edges look kind of like 
they're textured. And some of them. I'm not going to do all this in front of you guys because it would take forever. But I am going to add some kind of texture on some of these edges, maybe in a different size. Nope. Do we have something in between? Yeah, I need, I'm going to grab some black alcohol ink. Jacquard, if you're watching, I need some more black alcohol ink. What now? Um, this corner. Oh. I'm down. How stupid is my brain that I'm thinking about going in and doing this? Because it's like all highlighty. And so doing this, it's going to push everything. Well, then I just won't push over the black. Not a fan. Is it because it's yellow or because technique we're not feeling? Yeah, I think it's just the when it gets in the black. Like, if you were just to stay consistent around those. Well, I'm putting purple over it to correct it. Yeah, that's okay. I guess I could just go through and dot on just alcohol and it would disperse it. Paint it on with a brush, like do it like a whip it. Kind of like but no, oh, that's a little bit much, but I'm that's what I'm saying. Put alcohol in it. I guess I just don't understand what you mean by whip it, because that sounds like it's gonna be a Stroke. Well, just go like that and go. Brrr. But it's that's like just a random. I don't know. Okay. Well, thanks for your help. I don't know. I'm trying to give you ideas. I know, and I appreciate the ideas. I just don't know that you understand what I'm trying. To... They're highlighted, so I'm just thinking about highlighting. They are highlighted, but they're textured highlights. Ooh, that's a great angle, though. So, 
I think if I pulled one of these fine point Arteza brushes, which I think my Arteza code still works down in the description box. Who knows? So this is an empty Arteza. Uh, maybe a watercolor brush, maybe an alcohol ink brush. Who knows? So I just filled it with regular 91% alcohol. Oh, there's a button. Okay. So there's these buttons on the side that say push. So that's good. And then it like loads up into the brush. Oh, okay. So if I just, oh, that looks a lot out. But that could be a good thing to just kind of just move what we already have down. See, this is what I'm talking about, how even if I, um, spray, seal everything, I still end up doing things. <gasps> Joyce, thank you so much. Mandy, I appreciate it. What's up, Susan? We've missed you. And so this um, is kind of leaking out alcohol faster than I need it to be out. So I'm just going to kind of go along the edges and just dab it. Kind of like what Jeff was saying. And so that it, like if you can see right here, nope. Let's zoom in on the spot. So we'll work. Where's my finger? So if I just dab on this alcohol, knowing that alcohol is going to disperse, it's going to push everything. So knowing that, it's going to kind of let it do that. And then we'll see if we like it and we'll I'm going to make a decision from there if we want to keep on this process or not. Nah. So I just want to show you kind of what I'm looking at slash talking about. Ugh. Okay, that's super zoomed in. But see on like the outside edges in this particular example that's way too zoomed in. The area that I'm trying to do is essentially like yellow. Um, in that image anyways. You know what I mean? Like that, that frilliness on the outside is what I'm trying to, I guess, emulate. However, I'm not going to make you guys like sit here and watch me figure that out. So... That area that we just did is dried now. It's right here. And I think it's just kind of like, I don't know, it's not exactly what I was going for. But I think, I think this got way extra. And I'm not even sure how to fix that. Let's take our this and do relief, uh, relief in that I'm using the alcohol that's just here to pick up some of that color. If I was scratching the surface, it would be, 
Graffito. But I'm not scratching it, so it's just relief. Maybe I'll go back over it with a teal, but it was definitely kind of a distracting mark. So hopefully that looks a little bit better. Vamp, you like the darker frilly? I think it just didn't make quite enough sense because I would have to do it like a lot of places. So I think if I do it with colors that are already incorporated, then I'll give y'all a shout out. Do friends about y'all's channel, they're starting to epoxy it. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Coop. I don't know where my oh this. Susan, thank you so much. Oh, you did. It'll still be a success. I just need to rework this bit. So what I'm gonna do is something. Mm. So, B, you don't think it'll look right to do that fat, fat marker? I don't have enough control. Okay. So, I'm going to put some of not yellow. Purple does look black when concentrated. I'm going to put some of my, this color, that is squirting not directly into here, with some alcohol so it doesn't just settle on the bottom. I'm just going to put the colors of my palette out on here. Oh, you want to get down? Get down? Love it, boy. Mm. Canvas, be sweet. All right. So I'm going to fill this in with apparently a junk color. I'm going to fill it in with the aqua because I don't have any aqua in the surrounding areas. So for this, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do and then either finish the rest of it in a time lapse or just off camera because it'll get hella boring just to watch me dab on aqua colored diluted resin. Nope. Alcohol. Ooh, that's pretty. Where am I? I'm just dabbing it on um, mostly right on the line. But also I'm kind of like going in and out. And what I'm, what is happening is when you add alcohol inks back onto a piece or even just alcohol, it's going to disperse what you already have down. It's going to push all that color outwards. And so that push outwards is going to give me that darker kind of outline that I'm, I'm kind of looking for. 
And it's not going to be just the fine dot that you put on there. It's going to grow out just a little bit. So keep that in mind when you first put your little dots down. It's not going to look exactly like what you had. It's going to be a little bit bigger. So leave room for growth, I guess. So this is a something from somewhere. I'm sure that one of the mods um, can give you some direction on where I got these and where you can get them and who makes them. I just, the information is eluding me currently. I love that this aqua is like starting to look like it's glowing. Also, my tea tiny this is getting very saturated with some of the purples. So I'm gonna have to change it out in a minute. And also I'm gonna change color in a minute because I'm moving up into where some of it looks more blue. Oh my goodness, I love this technique. This is maybe my new favorite thing. I'm so excited about this. These little bitty dots of alcohol and color is something that I could do and just kind of kind of zone out. Ooh, sorry, TG. Started looking pretty. Well, thank you, Alpha. Appreciate that. Where am I gonna go? Let's go. Oh my goodness, there's so many things that are okay, let's go right here. So we're going to work on this bit and then I'm going to let you guys just imagine until tomorrow what the rest of it's going to look like because one, my phone's going to die, shocker, and two, you guys already should be over at like Tish's channel. I feel bad for running over. So I can tell because it's just solid pink and it's there's no like center that's like lighter, that I have too much color and not enough alcohol in my alcohol and alcohol ink mixture. I'm just gonna add a little bit more alcohol and see what we got. Still too much. If this doesn't work, then I'm just gonna have another little cup of um, Alcohol, just clear alcohol on the side. Okay, that's working better. No, it's not. I'm gonna have a clear on the side. It's gonna start clear anyways. And I'll just dab in the center of it and that'll push the pink outward. and give it some dimension because if it just had that dark or just solid pink look, it would look good, but it's gonna look better if you have a variation in depth, something lighter, something darker. It just makes everything look better when there's a variation in tone and hue. Also, if you're interested, I have a color theory blog up and it'll help you choose colors for your next art piece. Could use a dropper. Hi Vinny, how are you doing? So the thing about a dropper is it's gonna drop a drop. And that will look fine, but I wouldn't do it on something that's this kind of smaller scale. 
It really, if you're going to use a dropper, it's going to give you a larger, like, circle of alcohol. And for something that's kind of this small, you need something a little bit, a finer point. You could use a dropper, but just be careful because it could put a, a dot that's too big, a dollop, a drop of alcohol that's going to grow to a size bigger than you may have been anticipating. So the answer is kind of. You can, you, yeah, yes, kind of. But you don't have enough, yeah, like Vance said, you don't have enough control. And sorry, I just noticed my wine is very empty and very watered down at this point. Okay. So it's looking good. I'm not going to do all of this in front of you guys. One, it's going to be boring. Two, my phone's going to die before I get that done. I would plug it in, but my mic's plugged into that hole. I know that's what she said. So let's do a little bit more detail with our marker. And... Um, I'll probably just finish our little mushroom cap there. I'm going to add some like sketchy lines. Kind of like I'm just now drawing it on, actually. This is one of my favorite things to do. Not the best marker for what I'm trying to do. I need a pen. Need a, what is that? Oh, it's eyeliner. That's not gonna work. There, there we go. There we go, but that's not working either. I wish I could draw with a pen like this. Um, but, and then like use that as my sketch. I don't have that, I don't have that. That kind of conviction with your pen. I mean, No, but like I wouldn't be able to draw it with a pen and just like sketch it until, you know, people like scribble until it's a face and it then looks amazing, but you can still see the scribble lines. I don't have that. 
have to draw it in pencil, get it perfect, and then add what would be scribble lines over top. What's wrong with those things? Nothing. I'm going to do it all over, but my phone's at like 10%, and I can't plug it in. So I'm just showing them all the parts of what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to dot this uh, after the live, and then tomorrow we'll add some foil, and we'll add a flood coat. If Bowie wants to be petty, Bowie can be petty. We'll also be adding my signature splatters. If an art piece could have like an off shoulder shirt, I'd make it happen because that's also very on brand for me. And I know some people don't like these like sketchy lines but um, my artwork maybe just isn't for them. I get questions a lot from people that are like, how do you deal with people that don't like your work? How do you deal with people that just don't have anything nice to say? And uh, the answer is I just don't deal with them. If someone's gonna be negative, they can do it over there like all the way over there. Would the Sharpie maybe work because it's alcohol based and blur out? So Barbara, I can definitely show you what alcohol and Sharpie would do. And find a Sharpie. If my phone dies, uh, then be kind to one another because you never know what someone's going through. So here's a Sharpie. And Here's some dots. Actually, let me do some, do some down here. I'm actually going to add some, um, where am I? We'll be right, we'll be right here. I'm actually going to add some black uh, alcohol ink to this as well. So I dotted it a little bit down here. And I'll just put some alcohol over top. Bowie has zoomies, he's on the bed, it's amazing, I love it. So, ugh, sorry about that. So right here, I don't know why I have been doing that instead of just taking you for a ride. So, um, yes, it, it just kind of makes it a fuzzy gray purple, which is fine, but, um, I'm going to want black, like, no question about it, it's black alcohol ink. But yeah, I've done um, pieces on tiles with Sharpie and then put alcohol on them and then they go, they look awesome. This is a memory piece for sure. Tim, I just want to give you all of the positive memories. Barbara, you should totally sketch a jelly. Micro swabs used for makeup, cleaning cameras, keyboards, etc. That sounds accurate, Gail. Thank you very much. Uh, what time are you going live for part two tomorrow? I will be, what's today? Wednesday. So tomorrow is Thursday. I'll be going live at 6 p.m. Central, which is two hours back from right now. I'm sorry I got, I've ran completely late today. So it's 20 in like right now, tomorrow, but two hours back or 22 hours from now or just 6 p.m. Central. Oh. Seven ninety eight hundred hours in military time.
Looks epic. Thank you so much. Okay, so all I'm going to do tonight um, is fill in the dotted frillies. And if I come up with a technique that I'm like, ermagerd, you guys have to see what I just did. Then I'll leave a section so I can show you what goes on. Then we're going to add some black alcohol ink. We're going to add some foil. And we're going to flood. Peach, peach. Uh, how to deal with people. Bring helmets and crayons. It always works. Listen, if you and I were in an argument and you were like, here's some crayons, I would forget and I would just start coloring. Oh, that's awesome, Valerie. Have fun dotting. Well, I think Jeff's going to cook dinner and then while he's doing that, I'm going to get my dot on. In the meantime, here's my babies. This is Canvas trying to make Bowie play. Oh, also, I realized something. These, all of these, have numbers on them. I didn't have to, like, rake something through and then pause it and find out which one it is. I'm just going to have, like, I'm going to find a way to pick three people to pick three numbers between like one and 500, I guess. And then they're gonna, I'll pull those three numbers and then I'll let you guys decide which of the three cards I pull uh, that I have to use to paint with. So I let the box of color pick every Tuesday at 2 p.m. I let it pick the colors that I'm gonna use on the live feed. I have no idea where my babies went. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Shelly, that's a very good point. Why you got to bring up science and math like that? So Gail, um, Sarah Renee Clark is who makes it. And so I guess sarahreneclark.com. Um, that's how you spell it. And there are two boxes. I don't think one has more color and more neutrals than the other, et cetera. Um, she is getting big. Bubba. She got, um, she's going to a puppy daycare to play with some other puppies tomorrow for a half day. Super excited. Anyways, um, I'll be finishing this tomorrow. I hope you've had an amazing day. We've seen her shove them back in the box forever. So I'm just going to get some people together between now and Tuesday and promise them wine. And we're just going to put them back in order. Anyways, you guys are amazing. Be kind to one another. You never know what someone's going through. Tim, my whole heart goes out to you. We love you so much. Thank you guys for being here helping to support the channel the fam thank you mods for being so amazing also i have a sale right now on my shop artisttilldeath.com if you need resin anything the code is easter for 15 percent off through the weekend um so yeah you guys have an awesome evening we're going to finish this tomorrow with you so come here don't forget to leave me your thumbs. After the live feed, if you could comment what your favorite color is in the piece, it will help my channel. If you engage in the comments instead of the chat, it helps. And don't forget to leave me your thumbs. Subscribe if you haven't and share my videos if you got time. It's free and it helps me a lot. You guys are amazing. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Be kind to one another because you never know what someone's going through. So you don't have to. Bubba, you're so beautiful. Canvas, did you come say bye? Oh, there her is. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. We said bye. We said bye.